whoever. So, the Euros have been a good distraction. England's performance in the Euros so far has been somewhat mediocre, but fair enough. We kind of got through. Clean slate, top of the group, no goals conceded. You can't really go wrong with that, all things considered. But England, similar to Man United, the team that I support, it's more so the performance and less so about the results, right? You look at United finishing second in the league, you know, of course, considering how everybody kind of expected us not to finish second or not even to finish the top four, great achievement. But then considering how poorly Man City started and how strongly we started and the fact that Liverpool imploded, Chelsea were, you know, coached by a fairly mediocre manager and Frank Lampard at the time, Arsenal were doing an Arsenal it really did seem like a little bit of a letdown that we kind of didn't really take the ball by the horns and stamp a little bit more of a challenge for the title this well, this past season. And, you know, the fact that, you know, so much has been invested in the squad and still it feels like the team isn't really that great and the managers are a bit average, but we've got some special players here and there. There's kind of some correlations when it comes to it. And, and of course, just in terms of coaching ability or in terms of kind of, you know, the ability to kind of set a team up to play a certain way, an expansive brand of football, um, football that brings out the best of the players available. There is definitely some correlations between Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Gareth Southgate. I would say maybe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has the benefit of having the profile of United for the past, what, three and a half years. Um, that would definitely help him. But I'd say if they both went on the kind of like open market in terms of getting a coaching job for a club team, I think they'd both be in it for a big surprise as to what level they were actually at from Man United. Because you'd imagine if you leave United, you'd probably be able to go to another top team, right? Maybe a top four, top five, top six team. But I think they'd both struggle to find jobs in those kind of clubs personally. Um, especially if, if the clubs are aiming to play because everyone now wants sexy football, right? Um, everyone wants kind of expansive, expressive, attacking football. And those two managers aren't necessarily your ones. But... I still have to say, especially the previous game against Czech Republic, we kind of stumbled into this formation due to some of the suspensions or people not suspensions, uh, Mount and what's his name, Chilwell had to kind of be out because they came in contact with, what's his name, um, the Scottish lad, Billy Gilmore. So that kind of forced Gareth Southgate's hand. He had to make some changes, brought Saka in, Grealish started. And I think that really worked really, really well. I think Saka, because he hasn't really been spoken about the entire time, everyone's been focusing more on Jaden Sancho and why he hasn't played and maybe Rashford. I think Saka came on with a point to prove and he played really, really well against Czech Republic, man. He was an absolute menace, um, you know, doing exactly what he did at Arsenal. So Arsenal fans aren't surprised by his level of performance, but he really did kind of stake a claim for himself as being maybe one of the first options off the bench if kind of Southgate prefers to go with his kind of tried and true front three then maybe he's the first option off the bench, but he played really well. He did himself um, all the favours in terms of making sure Southgate has some problems or some issues when it comes to selecting the team. Um, but overall, it's just a bit flat, isn't it? Just a bit flat. Sterling obviously popped up with a goal again, another um, important player in the kind of, he kind of reminds me what he does in England, similar to what Russia does for United. You know, he can have a bit of a, poor game running into players and not necessarily you know having any influence on the game and then a chance will pop up and he will either contribute an assist or he'll score a goal and that kind of makes people forget about all the other things that have happened and I just think as we've seen now you know with the Euros and some of the top teams we're all kind of starting to see especially avid watchers of the Premier League who don't watch any other league I think I've kind of been fortunate that I kind of, you know, force myself most weekends if I'm bored to just watch random leagues because I've got obviously a BT Sports um, subscription so I can watch some stuff, some Bundesliga matches, some League R matches and then of course through the other dodgy sites you can watch other leagues. But I think people were in for a surprise. People, are, most England fans it feels like have been a little bit surprised by the level or the standard of our players compared to other nations, especially some of the nations that maybe aren't as like, you know, amazing you know Slovakia's I think second game they play some really great stuff it's forget all the big guns but I think people have kind of finally started to see that maybe a lot of these players that we think are sensational aren't really that sensational and they're just good players they're not like you know world beaters but they're really really good players and I think that's okay but it's just this idea that we have in our head that you know the likes of the Phil Foden's are going to be gazers and all this sort of stuff and it's not the same and it's unfair to expect that from these kind of players and also football's just not that way anymore now football is basically mostly a systems thing right it's mostly a who can have the best system and who 
basically and what kind of players do you need to basically um, fit into that system and I think some of these players once they've been taken out of it and they've kind of had to rely on their technical abilities and you know to, to just to be able to play football because obviously the pace of international football is way slower so you can't really get away with the kind of health scale of football that you get what we do in the Premier League it kind of does show up a lot of deficiencies and I think that's what we've basically been seeing as England fans overall I think people have started to realize okay we've got some great some good some great players some good players but overall we're not like you know the most amazing team to watch or we're not the most like we don't have a, you know a lot of weapons really at our disposal the tactics as well don't really bring out the best in the players because if that was me and I was England coach I would definitely say that there is definitely a it's best definitely an unbalanced squad you would say right I think definitely you would say attacking wise that England squad is pretty decent um, but when it comes to defence it's probably not the best or it's okay so if that's the case just put all your best players or the, the players who kind of fit well in that system of attack whatever you want to do and just kind of let them express themselves um, that might be the best option possibly obviously some tactics here and some tactics you can kind of throw in here and there but that might be the best way to go but so far this Gareth Southgate approach has worked kind of keeping solid um, obviously, you know, um, making sure you got those two defensive midfielders in midfield, like in Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice, covering our centre backs, which is weird considering you've got a pretty decent centre back pairing in either Maguire, Stones, Mings, and who else? And Ben White. They're all fairly decent. None of them are, you know, super crap. They're all pretty okay. I'm not really nervous about either of them kind of like, you know, one on one with any player, to be honest, you know. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. But overall, hey, um, next round on Tuesday, England facing Germany. That's going to be a big test, of course. Um, eager to see what happens there. Not feeling too optimistic, especially considering how, you know, Germany kind of put themselves through a very hard fought 2-1 um, victory against Hungary. Last minute kind of um, winner from Leon Goretzka right towards the end. So they've definitely got their tails up or maybe they might be a bit tired. Who knows? But, you know, England against Wales at Wembley, there's always kind of tears for England fans for the most part. So I'm not feeling optimistic about that, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. This England side could go on to kind of be... One of those weirdly, oddly functional kind of England squads, right? It just kind of gets the job done. So let's see what goes on in the round of 16 coming up.